Welcome to this video on getting started with Tableau Prep. You can download the dataset and packaged flow file underneath the video to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Prep. We're working with data for best-selling books. Tableau Prep makes it easy to get your data ready for analysis. With the same highly interactive drag-and-drop interactions you're used to, Tableau Prep can be used to combine, clean, and shape your data exactly how you want it. Preparing data is done by building a flow, made up of steps such as cleaning, pivoting, or aggregating data. Tableau Desktop works best with data that is tidy in structure. That is, the data should be in rows and columns, and each row should represent one item of data, and each column should be one attribute. How do we get our data that way using Tableau Prep? Let's jump in. First, we'll connect to the data set. Our bestseller data is in Excel. We'll connect to the American Booksellers Association bestseller lists from February 28th. Here in the Connections pane, we see the list of tables, or sheet tabs, in the data set. We'll drag out a table, and now we have our first step in the flow. The input step is configurable below. We can bring in every sheet in the file by using a wildcard union and leaving the matching pattern blank. Over on the right, we can see a list of the fields we'll bring in from these tables. Everything looks good. Up in the flow pane, we can rename this step by double-clicking and typing a name. Let's call this February 28th. To add another step in the flow, we'll click the plus button. We want just a basic cleaning step to start. This will let us see the state of our data and what we might need to do to clean it. Below the flow pane, we now see the profile pane and data grid. The profile pane shows a card for each field in the data set and the cards display the values in each field, as well as distribution information about how frequently each value appears. By clicking on a bar, we can highlight related values in other fields. The Info field has multiple pieces of information in one column. If we look down in the data grid, which shows a more row-level representation of the data, we can see that this field has a pipe between title and author then a dollar sign before the price, and a pipe and ISBN. We can split these values out into unique columns, as we want for analysis. Click on the card, and open the menu. There are multiple cleaning options here, but we'll choose Automatic Split. Tableau Prep is smart enough to recognize common delimiters, even when they're different, and we'll split these out for four new columns. Renaming the new fields is as easy as double-clicking and typing the desired name. We no longer need the original info field, so we can remove it. We can also split this field and remove the original. Now we have all the distinct columns we want. Price is currently a string data type, but it should be a decimal number. We can click on the data type icon and choose number, decimal. We have more weeks worth of data, so let's add them to the flow. We can connect to new data. It can be from any source, but ours happens to be another Excel file. We'll bring in a table, select wildcard union, and now we have our second data source. To combine two steps in the flow, simply drag one onto the other and select Join or Union. Here we have the same column structures, so we want to union. We can verify that everything matches up correctly. Now we simply need to make sure that the cleaning we did is applied to the results from the union, not the first data set alone. We can right-click on the line and select Remove then drag the union step to the cleaning step. That's all it takes. Our data is prepared and ready for use, so let's create an output step. We'll click the plus and add an output. 
we'll choose a CSV format. And we can choose where to save the file and what to name it. Now when we run the flow, we generate a new file. Tableau Prep does not write back to the original data source. This new file contains all of the data as we cleaned and combined it. We're ready for analysis. Flows in Tableau Prep can be simple or complex, and each type of step has robust options. Thank you for watching this video on getting started with Tableau Prep. We invite you to continue with the other free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on the Tableau Prep interface. You can download the dataset and packaged flow file underneath the video. We're working with weekly data for best-selling books. Tableau Prep lets you clean, shape, and combine data to prepare it for analysis. When we open Tableau Prep, we begin on the Start screen. To the far right, we have the Discover pane, with educational resources and links to relevant content. In the middle, we have links to previous flow files and samples. To the left is the Connections pane. We can select a data source from the Connections pane and drag a table out. This creates the first step in the flow, an input step. Every flow must begin with an input step, though there can be multiple inputs in a flow. When we select a step in the flow pane, its related pane will open below. We can configure the input by choosing to bring in a single table or create a wildcard union. We can also configure the sampling if our data source is large enough to merit being sampled. To the right, we see the fields in the data and can pick exactly which ones to bring into Tableau Prep. We can also set filters here, limiting what data is brought into the rest of the flow. For more information on bringing data into Tableau Prep, check out the video on the input step. To add another step, we click the plus icon in the previous step in the flow. We can choose from a cleaning step, an aggregate, pivot, join, union, or output. A cleaning step appears in the flow as a simple bar. Below, we have the profile pane, which shows us the fields in the data as cards. Each card displays the values in that field and the number of rows for each value, providing insight into the structure and relationships of your data. For more information on the profile pane, check out its video. Cleaning operations are found in the menu for each card or in the contextual toolbar. We can also do some cleaning by direct interaction, such as changing the data type, or renaming a field. Each type of cleaning operation we perform will appear as an annotation above the cleaning step in the flow pane and will be tracked in the changes to the left. For more information on cleaning in Tableau Prep, check out the video on the cleaning step. Below the profile pane is the data grid, which shows rows of data similar to a spreadsheet view. Let's open a more complicated flow and go through some of the other steps we can do in Tableau Prep. Here, we have a complex flow. We can break it down into parts. There are a series of pivots that restructure data for January's bestsellers, bringing it all back together with a series of joins. There's a union that combines several weeks' worth of data for February. March is pivoted and all three months are brought back together with a union. Another data source brings in sales information and aggregates it from transactional data to book level data, then joins it with the best sellers. Finally, movie adaptation data is also brought in via another join, and an output is generated for the fully combined data source. Each type of step in a Tableau prep flow is present here. We can click any part of the flow to bring up the panes associated with that step. First, let's look at a pivot, indicated by this columns to rows icon in the flow. Fields are brought from the left side of the field list to the pivot values drop area. The results, that is the pivoted fields, are shown to the right, both with a profile pane 
and data grid view. For more information on how to perform a pivot in Tableau Prep, check out the video on the pivot step. Next, let's click into an aggregation step, indicated by a sigma icon in the flow. Fields are again displayed on the left and brought either to the grouped fields area or the aggregated fields area, depending on how each field should be treated by the aggregation. For more information on how to perform an aggregation in Tableau Prep, check out the video on the aggregate step. Combining data can be done by unioning, adding more rows with the same column structure, or joining, adding new columns to existing rows of data. Let's look at a union step. A union shows the inputs going into the union on the left, and on the right, we see the profile pane and data grid view of the results. Each field's card displays a colored bar, showing which data inputs are present in that field. If we need to merge fields, we can do so with a simple drag and drop. There's also a table names column generated by Tableau that contains information about which data source each row came from. For more information about how to perform a union in Tableau Prep, check out the video on the union step. Joins are another way of combining data. A join step provides a visual interface for configuring the join. To the far left, we can build the join clause or clauses, choosing which fields to join and how. We can select the join type by clicking on the diagram. Under the join type, we see the summary of results, showing us what is being matched or mismatched. If we change the join type, we see the summary of results update. Just to the right of the join configuration pane, we see the breakdown of the join clauses. Values in red are unmatched and values in black are matched. Further to the right, we see the profile pane and data grid view of the results. For more information about how to perform a join in Tableau Prep, check out the video on the join step. Finally, once the data has been cleaned, shaped, and combined to our satisfaction, we must output the data. Saving the flow file, .tfl, will save the flow itself, not generate an output of data. A packaged flow file, .tflx, includes the flow and extracts of flat files, though not data from database connections, and is not the same as outputting the finished, cleaned data. To create the finished data source, an output step must be added to the flow, and the flow must be run. In the output pane, the right side shows the data grid preview of what the finished data will look like. To the left, the output can be configured. It can either be saved as a file or published as a data source. The file can be named and set either as a .hyper or .tde extract or a CSV, and we can specify where to save the file. Clicking Run Flow will execute the flow and generate the output file or publish the data source. Note that if a flow has multiple outputs, they can be run independently or simultaneously. For more information, check out the video on the output step. Thank you for watching this video on the interface of Tableau Prep. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on the input step in Tableau Prep. You can download the datasets and package flow file underneath the video to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Prep. We're working with data for best-selling books. Every flow starts with data, and a flow must start with at least one input step, though new data, new input steps, can continue to be added to the flow at any stage. To add data in an existing flow, we can click on the plus in the connections pane. But let's start from the beginning. To begin a flow and add data, we'll click Connect to Data from the Start screen. We see the list of supported data sources. If we choose to connect to a server, we'll need the connection information specific to that data source. For now, we'll choose Microsoft Excel. Navigate to the file on your machine and click Open. The Connections pane will display the data connection at the top, and below, 
a list of the tables or sheet tabs in that data connection. We have the option to turn on the data interpreter, which can identify subtables and clean up things like header rows and blank columns. The data interpreter functions just the same as it does in Tableau Desktop. To create an input step, we need to drag a table out from the connection pane. This creates a step in the flow, and the input pane below provides options for configuration. For now, let's leave this as a single table. To the right, we see the fields in the data and can pick exactly what fields to bring into Tableau Prep. Sample values show the type of data for each field, so we can see how things are formatted. We can also set filters here, limiting what data is brought into the rest of the flow. For example, let's only bring in bestsellers ranked 1 through 5. If we click Add Filter, note that it opens as a calculation window. We can enter our parameters, such as rank is less than 6, and see that filter reflected. To remove it, simply click to open the drop-down menu and remove. But let's say we want to bring in more than a single table as part of the data input. If the structures of the tables are consistent, we can perform a wildcard union. A wildcard union during the input step is different than a union step in the flow in that we cannot merge fields or modify the schema. For more information on unions, check out the video on the union step. If we connect to a large file, Tableau Prep may sample by default. This takes a subset of the data and brings it into the flow for us to manipulate and prepare. When we run the flow, it is run against all the data, not just the sample. The sample keeps the process of building the flow more efficient than trying to profile all the data and apply changes to the much larger data volume as we're working. We can configure the sample under the Data Sample tab in the Input pane. Data over 1 million rows will likely be sampled, but if there's a large number of columns, the sample could contain fewer rows or be triggered earlier. The default sample amount is based on the size of the data, not an explicit number of rows. This means if you have 300 fields, you'll get fewer rows in your sample than if you only had five fields. Alternatively, we can choose to sample a specific number of rows with an upper limit of a million, or we can choose to use all the data, though this will have a performance impact when building the flow. We can also select a sampling method. Quick Select contains whichever rows the data source provides. It may run into sampling issues, such as not covering the full range of values in the data, for example, only showing one year's worth of data when the original data spans a decade. By contrast, we can select a random sample. This will take longer to generate and may have performance impacts if any operation requires the sample to be regenerated, though it may result in a better, though not perfect, representation of the entire data set. To get the most representative sample, we should apply any relevant filters and deselect fields in the input step rather than in the flow. By narrowing the scope of fields or rows in the input, which is to say, before sampling, we'll maximize the sample's usefulness. If we don't remove fields or filter until after the input step, the sample will not be as robust as it could be. Input steps can be added along any point in the flow. Each data source comes in as its own step, then can be unioned or joined with other steps to combine the data. For more information on combining data, check out the videos on the union step and the join step. Thank you for watching this video on bringing data into Tableau Prep. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on the cleaning step in Tableau Prep. You can download the packaged flow file underneath the video to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Prep. We're working with data for best-selling books. Data can be unready for analysis for a lot of reasons. If you need to do things that have nothing to do with shaping the data, like pivoting or aggregating, or combining it through joins or unions, then it's likely you'll need to perform some cleaning operations. Cleaning in Tableau Prep covers everything from removing fields changing data types, creating calculated fields, and more. Cleaning data in Tableau Prep is done in a cleaning step in the flow. 
From the previous step, click the plus icon and choose Add Step. The default step is a cleaning step, which appears in the flow as a bar. When we're on a clean step, below we see the profile pane and data grid. Each field in the data is represented as a card in the profile pane. We can rename fields or change their data type by interacting directly on a card. If we open a card's menu, we see many other options. Let's go through brief examples of each of these. First, this table names one field is an artifact of the union. We don't need it. Simply select the card and go to the menu, choosing Remove Field. Next, we'll rename a field. Here, Table Names is actually the bestseller list, so we'll double click on the name and enter List instead. The information about which week's worth of data we're looking at is contained in the File Paths field. This is another field generated automatically by Tableau Prep. We want to keep only the date portion of these file names. Let's do some cleaning operations to get there. We'll open the menu and select Custom Split. For the separator, we'll enter a period and we'll choose to only split off the first field. This will look for the period and keep only what occurs before it, essentially trimming the file extension for us. We now have a new field, File Paths Split 1, that lacks the file extension. Let's remove the original field, File Paths. Note that in Tableau Prep, we can remove fields even if they're used for calculations or splits. And now we just have the new split field. However, this new field still says ABA bestsellers before the date. We can use some of the built-in quick cleaning options to address this. We'll open the menu and choose Clean. These are the single-click options available to speed up common cleaning processes. We'll choose Remove Letters, and then once again go back to the menu, choose Clean, and we'll follow up with Trim Spaces. Now we're left with just the numeric date, exactly as we want. Let's rename this Week. Tableau Prep has not recognized this as a date yet, but we can set the data type here by clicking on the icon for String, ABC, and choosing Date instead. Let's also change the data type for the Price field. We'll make it a decimal number. Note how the view updates from showing the details, gray bars with text, to the summary view, blue bars binned on axis. Next, let's take a look at filtering. For some data types, such as date, we have the ability to filter to a range of dates or a relative date using a filtering interface. Numeric fields, like rank, also have a filtering interface for a range of values. For most field types, filtering is done simply as a calculation. For example, we could filter the list field to only values containing nonfiction, but we'll undo that. Over in the title column, we realize that there are some similar values. For example, 12 rules for life and 12 rules for life with a subtitle as well. We know that these should actually be considered the same value. We can use the group and replace feature to combine these values and replace them with a single value. In the menu, choose Group and Replace, and we'll pick Manual Selection. For more information on the other options, check out the video on Group and Replace. In the editor, select the first value we'd like to group. This will become the value that overrides the others. Now, to the right, we'll pick the value that should be grouped with that first value. We can repeat the process with Enlightenment Now and any other titles that should be the same. The paperclip icon indicates which values have been grouped. When we click Done, those values are combined and replaced with the primary value we chose. All records containing those values will be updated when we run the flow. Finally, let's say that our standard is for books with two authors or an author and an illustrator, we use the word AND instead of an ampersand. Let's use a calculation to fix this. We'll open the menu for the Author field and choose Create Calculated Field. If we name this Author, 
it will simply update the field rather than creating a net new field. Very handy. We'll enter our calculation and click Save. If we search again, we see that there are no more ampersands. We can also directly modify a value. Simply right click and choose Edit Value and then make the desired modifications directly in line. This will update the one value on every row where that value appears. It's great for fixing specific things, but for more programmatic changes, a calculation might work best. It can be easy to lose track of what we've done in a cleaning step, since it can contain so many types of operations. Annotations are added to cards that we've worked on, and the cleaning step in the flow gets annotations as well to show what's been done, with icons for each of the main types of cleaning. Even more powerfully, the changes, here to the left, shows a log of everything that was done in that step. If we want to undo a specific change, such as removing this field, we can delete it without losing everything we did afterwards. If we want to modify a calculation, we can right-click on it in the Changes and edit directly. Note that when we click back into a change, we're going back to that data as it was at that point. To see the entirety of what we did in a cleaning step, we need to make sure we're clicked onto the last change. To keep the flow organized, we can create a cleaning step at any point. This starts with a clean slate of no annotations and no changes allowing us to perform cleaning operations that make sense together in a single step, with other steps for other sets of operations. Thank you for watching this video on cleaning and Tableau prep. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on the group and replace feature in Tableau prep. You can download the packaged flow file underneath the video to follow along in your own copy of Tableau prep. A common issue in data cleanliness is the presence of multiple values that should be a single value, such as GB and Great Britain. To deal with this in Tableau Prep, we can leverage the Group and Replace feature in a cleaning step. This feature allows us to group multiple values and replace them with a single value, essentially re-aliasing. To begin, we're on a cleaning step in the flow. In the Profile pane, we can see the fields in the dataset. This is clearly nonsense data to illustrate a feature, not data we should try to analyze. The Airbnb listings field displays a common data cleanliness issue, inconsistencies of how a specific piece of information is captured. Here, the room information, bedroom or bathroom, was recorded multiple different ways. There's no easy way to programmatically remap these to be consistent, so we'll do a manual group and replace. First, we'll click on the card for the Airbnb listings field and open the menu. Under Group and Replace, we'll choose Manual Selection. Whatever we select first will become the replacing value. We'll use Bath. With that replacing value selected, the right side of the editor will display the remaining values. Select all the values that should be grouped under the replacing value. The left side of the editor will display a preview of the new values for the field, with a grouping paperclip icon beside bath, indicating that it's a grouped value. Let's do the same thing for bed. Select it on the left and choose the values to be grouped from the right. We can see at the top on the right side, the grouping values checkmark is grayed out, but the others can be toggled, allowing us to remove them from the group if desired. Since we took something out of the bath group, when we removed it from bed, it's now an ungrouped value. Let's add it back to bath. Click the bath bar to the left and add it back into the group. It's worth noting that if we were to refresh this data and a new value, such as beds, popped up in this field, it would not be added to any group. If we want to make sure that beds is added to the bed group, even though it's not currently present in the domain of the data, we can manually add it. Over in the left side of the editor, click the plus icon. We can now type the net new value, beds. It shows with a red dot, indicating that it's outside the domain, but otherwise it functions the same as any other value. 
If we click back into the bed group, we can now add the new red dot beds value. Now if the data is refreshed and beds shows up in this field, when the flow is run, that value will be grouped appropriately. Manual selection is good for instances where incorrect values are irregular or fairly different from the desired value. However, there are two options that apply algorithms to help group values. In the misspellings column, we have four commonly misspelled words and several variations for each word. In each instance, the incorrect versions are at least approximately pronounced the same way as the correct spelling. This is the kind of error a spell checker may catch. We can use the pronunciation option for group and replace, which uses the Metaphone 3 algorithm to automatically address these misspellings. We'll click on the card and open the menu, then select Group and Replace Pronunciation. The grouping is automatic this time. We can see on the left of the editor the new groups. Because the correct spelling was the most common value, that is what is chosen as the replace value. If the replace value was ever not the desired value, we can right-click on the new group and select Edit Value, then modify it to be what we want. Clicking on a group also opens the right side of the editor and exposes the values in the group, and we can manually add to or remove from the group if desired. The last group and replace option is common characters. In the name formatting column, we see that some of the names are listed as last name, comma, first name, rather than the more common first name, last name. We don't want to have two values for the same person, so we should group them. Common Characters uses the n-gram fingerprint algorithm to identify words by their unique characters, thus recognizing that Dorian Gray and Gray, comma, Dorian are the same. As with pronunciation, the grouping is automatic, and the most commonly occurring value in the group becomes the replace value. It's important to remember that algorithms are not perfect. We recommend checking the groups to ensure data is not incorrectly grouped. A group that is automatically created can be modified just like a manual group by clicking on the bar and using the right side of the editor to choose the correct values. Although only one method of group and replace can be performed at a time, if an algorithm misses a group that should exist, we can create a manual group in the editor in addition to the automatic groups. Finally, if we need to simply address a typo or other small-scale issue, we can always directly edit a value. If, for example, we fix this misspelling of Tableau by right-clicking and editing the value, it will automatically be grouped with the correct value. Thank you for watching this video on Group and Replace and Tableau Prep. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on the Profile pane in Tableau Prep. You can download the dataset and packaged flow files underneath the video to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Prep. We're working with data for best-selling books. When we're on a cleaning step, indicated in the flow by a bar icon, the pane below the flow is the profile pane. For more information on cleaning data, check out the video on the cleaning step. The profile pane helps us explore our data and understand its contents. It's a powerful way of interacting with our data. For discrete data, each gray bar we see represents a value in the field itself. The length of the bar represents the number of records with that value and the visual scroll bar provides an overview of the distribution of the data. For example, we can see that most titles show up only once in the data, but Ready Player One appears twice. Similarly, most authors appear once, but we can sort and bring the authors with the most records to the top. If we click on a bar such as this author with the most records, it's highlighted in blue. Across all the other cards, the values associated with this author are also highlighted. Using the visual scroll bar in the title column, we can find the titles of her other books. We can see that her books are in the $10 to $20 range. Their various ranks and all occur in the early and middle list. Similarly, if we click on the nulls for the weeks on list field, 
We see null values here correspond to nulls in the previous rank field and the entirety of the early and middle and young adult lists. It appears those bestseller lists don't provide this information. The highlighting makes it easy to examine the structure of our data and see how the distributions and values of various fields are related. Discrete data shows us gray bars with each value in the field represented. Continuous data shows us blue bars in a histogram, representing ranges of the data. Let's look at the prices field. We can see the most common prices are $10 to $20, with 53 rows of data in this bar, and only one row in the $50 to $60 range. If we want to see the actual prices themselves, we can open the menu and change the view state from summary, that is, histogram, to detail, showing each value. Now we get a visual scroll bar on the side that shows the more detailed distribution, and we can see three peaks, cheaper books, the slightly pricier range of likely trade paperbacks, and a longer tail with peaks in the upper 20s. Going back to the summary view, if we multi-select the hardcover lists, we can see that sure enough, those higher prices are for hardcovers. The default view for continuous data is the binned summary view. This is very useful for outlier detection. For example, in the weeks on list field, it's easy to visually determine that there are several records that have been on the bestseller list far longer than the others. We could dig in to see if these are errors of data recording or if they're just abnormally popular books. If we were in the detail view, it would be much harder to see the gap between the rest of the records and those values. Let's click into a more complex flow. This time, we're looking at all four weeks' worth of data for February. We can see there are a lot of nulls for ISBN, author, and title. This is unexpected. If we click on one of these null bars, we see they're from one specific week. Let's go back to that input. If we click on the plus and insert a step, we can bring up the profile pane for just this week's worth of data. There are no nulls in the information field, and if we insert another step to compare, all the delimiters look the same as the other weeks. There must be something else going on. Ah, oh, wait. It looks like this field is called info in one week and information in another. Let's go into the union, and sure enough, we can use these colored bars to identify that the info information columns are mismatched. We'll drag information onto info to merge them. And now if we go back into the combined cleaning step, we see those nulls are gone from author and title. For more information on unions, check out the video on the union step. However, there are still some odd bars showing in the profile pane. There are some null prices and some blanks for ISBN. If we click onto either of these bars, we see that it's just trade paperback fiction from the week of the 21st. Let's go back and look at that data. We'll insert a step and click Trade Paperback Fiction. In the data grid, we can see just these values, almost like a temporary filter. And it looks like there's a comma instead of a pipe between the price and ISBN. Let's fix this with a quick calculation. Because we made this change upstream in the flow before the union and cleaning step, when we go back to the later clean step, the change is carried through and we have the appropriate data in place. The profile pane shows some good looking data. Thank you for watching this video on the profile pane in Tableau Prep. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on the pivot step in Tableau Prep. You can download the dataset and packaged flow file underneath the video to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Prep. We're working with weekly data for best-selling books. If your data has multiple fields for the same attribute, or if there is unique information stored in the field name, such as the fact that a given book is on the hardcover nonfiction bestseller list, 
your data may need to be pivoted. In our example, we have a week's worth of bestseller data that has multiple fields all containing the same type of information about bestselling books. Additionally, the field names are the bestseller lists. To analyze this data effectively, we need to pivot it so that we have a column for book information and a column for bestseller list. To get started with a pivot, we need to add a pivot step. Click the plus on the previous step and select Add Pivot. A new pane opens below, allowing us to configure the pivot. On the left, we see the list of fields in the data source. In the middle, we have a drop area for pivot one values. And to the far right, we'll see the pivot results displayed similarly to the profile pane and data grid. Let's think about what the pivot should be. Each of these fields, other than rank, contains the same type of information about each best-selling book. And the names of the fields themselves should be their own column of information. We'll multi-select everything but rank and bring all these fields to the drop area. In the results area, we can see two new fields, pivot one names, containing the names of the original fields, and pivot one values, containing the values of the original fields. We can rename these to list and info. If we want to add a column to the pivot, we simply drag it in. But it doesn't make sense to include rank in a column with information like title, so we'll remove this field by dragging it back out. Tableau Prep is smart enough to realize if there's a shared value in all the members of a new field, it can rename the field for us. If we ever don't want this feature to come on when applicable, we can simply uncheck the box. We have another data set that is structured differently. Here, there are two columns of data per bestseller list, one for author and one for title. Ideally, we would have a column for bestseller list, a column for authors, and a column for titles. To achieve this structure, we want to perform coordinated pivots, or pivot multiple groups at the same time. We'll add a pivot step, and to start, simply select the fields that should be a single field. We'll pick all the author fields, and bring them to the pivot one values drop area. Next, we'll click the plus to the right of the pivot one values header. This adds another pivot values drop area. Multi-select the title fields and bring them over. We'll add a clean step. And now we can see that our data is structured exactly as desired. A field for title, bestseller list, and author. And of course, we still have the rank field. Thank you for watching this video on pivoting in Tableau Prep. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on the aggregate step in Tableau Prep. You can download the data sets or package flow file underneath the video to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Prep. We're working with data for best-selling books. An aggregate step in Tableau Prep is used to change the level of detail of data so it's less granular, often in preparation for being combined with other data at a higher level of aggregation. For more information on what aggregation is and why it can be a necessary part of preparing data, check out the aggregation video in the Basics of Data Prep section. In our example here, we have bestseller information about books. In this data set, a row is a book's information for a given week. We also have data that's transactional data about sales from a bookstore. The sales data is a row per transaction. If we were to join this data, we'd wind up with replicated bestseller information for each transaction of a given book. Instead, what we want is for the bestseller information to be supplemented with a count of copies sold and the average discount for those books. 
The final data set should maintain the one row per book granularity of the bestseller data. So how do we get there? We'll aggregate the sales data to be book level rather than transaction level. First, we need to add an aggregate step in the flow. Click the plus icon on the previous step and select Add Aggregate. The aggregate pane opens below, allowing us to configure this aggregation. On the left, we see the list of fields in this data source. On the right, we have two drop areas, one for grouped fields and one for aggregated fields. In order for a field to come out the other side of an aggregation step, it must be either grouped or aggregated. Grouped fields determine the granularity of the row. If we want our post-aggregation data to be the number of books sold per date, we would group by book and date. If we want our post-aggregation data to simply be book, which we do, we'd group only by book. Whatever fields we want to have aggregated to the level of the grouped fields, in this case, the number of books sold, which means the count of transactions, and the average discount, will be brought to the aggregated fields area and have their aggregation operation set. So let's do it. We'll group by ISBN, as we know that this is more specific than using book and author, as ISBN accounts for different formats of the same title. We simply drag the ISBN field to the grouped fields area. Next, we'll drag transaction ID to the aggregated fields area. Because this is a string data type, the default aggregation is count. That's what we want, so we can leave it. Next, we'll drag discount to the aggregated fields area. As a numeric field, the default aggregation is sum, but we can change this to average simply by clicking where it says sum and choosing average from the dropdown. To see the results of this step, let's add a cleaning step and look at the profile pane. We can see in the contextual toolbar that we have three fields and 19 rows. Only three fields came through, ISBN, transaction ID, and discount, since those were the only fields we included in the aggregation pane. We should rename these so they're more correct. Instead of transaction ID, we'll name this number of books sold, and for discount, we'll add average. If we wanted to keep more of the original fields, say, author and title, we can click back into the aggregate step and add them to the grouped fields area. When we click back into the clean step, we're still at 19 rows. Those two fields, author and title, didn't change the granularity of the data because they're already accounted for in the ISBN. If we go back and add date, we jump to 121 rows because the granularity of what makes up a row in the data is now ISBN and date. Let's go back to our original three fields and 19 rows. Our data is now fully aggregated to the desired level of detail, and we can continue on to the next step in the prep process, such as joining this with the bestseller data. Thank you for watching this video on aggregation in Tableau Prep. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on the join step in Tableau Prep. You can download the datasets or package flow file underneath the video to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Prep. We're working with data for best-selling books and movie adaptations. Performing a join lets you combine data from two tables by bringing in new fields or columns based on a shared field or fields. For example, if we have book bestseller data and want to add fields for movie adaptations and their release dates, we could join the bestseller information with the movie information based on a shared field such as title. Let's do exactly that and see how it works in Tableau Prep. We need to have two inputs or steps to join together. Here, we have the combined 2018 bestseller data input step and a cleaning step for the movie's data. To create the join, we can either use the plus icon in the menu and select Add Join, then drag the second step to it, or we can simply drag one step onto the other and choose the new join drop area. 
If we want to name the steps so the join configuration pane is easier to understand, we can do so right from the flow pane. When we create a join, the pane below shows us tons of information about the join. To the far left, we can see the join clause area. Tableau Prep will pick a join clause by default based on the fields in the data, but we can add another by clicking the plus and selecting the fields, and we can modify the operator if we choose, and we can remove join clauses by simply clicking the X that appears when we hover. Below that, we see the join type. The step that is dragged is considered the right table. As we can see here, we dragged movies onto books. We can click on parts of the diagram to change the join type. The summary below updates to show which records are included or excluded based on the join clause and type. Here, for example, we see nine movies are matching 93 rows of books because books can appear in multiple lists and for multiple weeks. And 61 movie adaptations do not have books on the bestseller lists. If we switch to a left join, those books without movie adaptations, indicated by the hatched blue bar, move to the included column, and our results are now 1,300 rows. Let's stick with this. We can click on the summary of the join result bars, such as the mismatched values, or the included ones, or the default, the join results. This controls what we see over to the right. The Join Clauses pane shows all the values in the Join Clause. Red values are not matched across data sources. Black values indicate a match for the Join Clause. Further to the right, we can see a profile pane-like view of the results. Looking at the red mismatch values in the Join Clauses, I see that a wrinkle in time is in red in both columns. Shouldn't that be a black joined value then? There must be something going on here. Each title looks identical, which makes me think there must be a rogue space somewhere causing trouble. If we go back into the cleaning step for movies, we can use the clean option and trim spaces. Let's see if that fixed the join. Sure enough, we now have 11 movie results and a wrinkle in time is matched. It's easy to identify errors with the visual join interface and verify the results. If we add a step after the join, we see that fields that share a name across both sides of the join are appended with a dash one to distinguish the new fields. We don't need the author and title from the movie side of things, so we can remove these fields. Now we have tidy join data ready for the next step. Thank you for watching this video on the join step in Tableau Prep. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on the union step in Tableau Prep. You can download the data set and packaged flow file underneath the video to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Prep. We're working with data for best-selling books. Performing a union lets you combine data from multiple tables by bringing in new rows or records that match the structure of the original data. That is, the fields or columns are the same. For example, if we have multiple weeks of bestseller data as individual files and want to create a unified data source of all the weeks together, we can do a union. If we want to union tables with the exact same structure or schema, a wildcard union allows us to perform the union during the input step, if we're using flat files. This keeps the flow tidy and simplified by adding a single data input to the flow, even if it's made up of lots of tables behind the scenes. We'll add a data connection to an Excel file, and we'll choose February 28th. Bring a table to the flow, and in the input step, click to the Multiple Files tab, and then choose Wildcard Union. Here, the file contains seven sheet tabs for seven different bestseller lists, as seen over in the Connections pane. A wildcard union requires all files to be of the same type, all Excel or all CSV, for example. By identifying a pattern to define what content to include, Multiple tables can be unioned automatically. 
Note that there is no ability to perform a merge on mismatched fields with a wildcard union. We can set which folder to search in, including subfolders or not, set whether to include or exclude the files that match our pattern, and specify the pattern itself. If we want to include any files in the same folder that start with ABA bestsellers, we can simply remove everything but those words and add an asterisk instead. Below, note that we're currently looking at one file and seven sheets, but when I hit Enter to apply this matching pattern, we now have nine files and 37 sheets. We can also set the pattern for sheets that we want to include or exclude, such as only bringing in sheets for trade paperback fiction or nonfiction by using the pattern trade with an asterisk, and again hitting Enter or Apply. But we'll undo all that and go back to the default, which is just this file and all the sheets inside it. Regardless of how broadly or narrowly we define the wildcard union, note that two fields are added to the list of fields automatically. Table names will convey the table or sheet tab name, and file paths will convey the original file path. This helps keep track of where the data is coming from. To perform a union outside of a wildcard union during the input step, we can add a union step to the flow. We need to have at least two inputs or steps to union together. Here, we have four weeks worth of bestseller data. To perform a union in the flow, we can add a union from a plus menu, selecting Add Union, and dragging a step to it. Or we can drag one step onto another, choosing the drop area for New Union. Unlike a join, which can only support two tables, a union can be made up of many tables. Simply drag another table to the union, choosing the Add drop area. Selecting New Union would add a subsequent union step to the flow. The union step in the flow opens the configuration pane below. The left side offers a summary. It shows the inputs and resulting fields. Here we see there are two mismatched fields. Over to the right, we see the union results. The colored bars on the field cards match the inputs and show us where the data in these fields are coming from. We can quickly see that the info field is missing the week of the 14th. And we have an information column from just that week. Clearly, these should be the same field. To make it a little easier to see, let's check the Show Only Mismatch fields. Now we see just these two fields, and we can resolve the issue by merging them. Simply drag one card onto the other. I want the field to be named Info, so I'm bringing information onto Info. Now there are no longer any mismatched fields. Unchecking the box shows us the full results again, and we can see each card has all four color bars. The exception is this table names one field. Tableau Prep created this field for us so we can see where the data came from. This field is redundant information with the original table names and file paths from the wildcard unions and the input steps, so we can remove this field. We can't do it from the union step. We need to add a cleaning step, and then we can remove that field. Now we have clean, consistent data for all four data sources combined into one data set. Thank you for watching this video on the Union Step in Tableau Prep. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on the Output Step in Tableau Prep. You can download the package flow file underneath the video to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Prep. When we build a flow, we're not directly manipulating the data. Saving the flow file by going to the File menu and Saving or Save As creates a .tfl file. This stores the information about the flow itself, what data connections are there, the changes made to prepare the data, etc., but nothing else. To save the flow and extracts of the original data sets, flat files only, 
it's possible to save a package Tableau flow file, or .tflx. Neither of these is the prepared data, however. To actually push the data through the steps in the flow and generate a prepped data set, we must create an output and run the flow. To add an output step, click the plus icon on the previous step and select Add Output. This will create a new step in the flow. Below, the output pane will appear. This is where we can configure the output itself. First, we need to choose if we want to save a file or publish a data source. If we save a file, we can give it a name and choose how to output it. The options are a .hyper extract, a .tde extract, or a CSV. We can also specify where the file will be saved. The default location is the data sources folder in the Tableau Prep repository. Once the output type and location have been configured, the flow must be run. This is the process of actually taking all the original data and putting it through the flow to create the finished data set. Only after the output has been configured and the flow is run is the prep data ready for use. To regenerate or update the data output, say after adding new data to the flow, simply rerun the flow. We can choose to override the original file or set a different name to create a new output. A flow can contain multiple output steps. If there is a place along the flow where the data may be useful as an output, for example here, where we have the fully combined and cleaned bestseller data for three months, we can add an output. The flow branches and continues on with later joins of other data sets, and we have another output at the end of the flow. We can run either of these flows independently of each other. This can be useful if, say, we want to update the bestseller data source weekly, but only generate the final data set once a month. If at any time we don't want to create an output step and generate a formal data output, we can check our progress by right-clicking on any step and saying, Preview in Tableau Desktop. That will bring the data as it stands at that step directly into Tableau Desktop. We can verify the data in an analysis context and easily drop back into Tableau Prep to continue the flow or generate the output. Thank you for watching this video on creating an output in Tableau Prep. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on getting started with Tableau Prep Conductor. Tableau Prep Conductor is an add-on to Tableau Server that enables us to keep our data fresh by scheduling our published flows to run automatically. Tableau Prep Conductor also enables us to monitor, administer, and govern our flows. To use Tableau Prep Conductor, we create a flow in Tableau Prep Builder, publish the flow to Tableau Server, and then create a task in Tableau Server to schedule our flow. You can download the package flow file underneath this video to follow along. We are using the Sales Performance Flow. To learn about Tableau Prep Conductor, let's start by opening an existing flow in Tableau Prep Builder. This flow brings in data for regional orders, returns, and quotas. The data in these sources is neither clean nor consistent. Tableau Prep Builder enables us to perform steps to clean, shape, and combine our data to prepare it for analysis. One or more output steps define where the results of the flow will be published. Now that we understand our flow, let's examine our need for scheduling. Each day, new data is added to the orders, returns, and quota data sources. This new data needs to run through the data preparation steps of our flow each day. Rather than manually publishing our flow each day, let's use Tableau Prep Conductor to schedule our flow to run on a daily basis. From within Tableau Prep Builder, let's sign in to Tableau Server. Before we publish our flow to Tableau Server, let's set our two output steps to also publish to Tableau Server. We click on our Create Superstore Sales Output step, expand the output pane, and set the output to publish as a data source. Next, we select the server we just signed into and the desired project, output name, and description. 
We keep the output pane open and move on to our second output step. For the Create Annual Regional Performance output step, we set the output to publish as a data source. We select the server we are signed into and the desired project, output name, and description. Now that we have defined our output steps, we minimize the output pane. Let's publish our flow to Tableau Server so that we can schedule it to run. From the Server menu, we select Publish Flow. Next, we select the desired project and flow name. Let's edit our file connections. We'll select Upload to package our six source files into the published flow. A direct connection enables the files to be refreshed, but requires Tableau Server to have access to the locations of our source files. Let's publish our flow. Tableau Server now shows us the flow we just published. On this overview tab, we see our two output steps above the published flow. Let's create a new task to schedule our flow. We can create separate tasks for each output, but in our case, we'll schedule both outputs to run at the same time. Let's schedule our outputs to run daily at 11 a.m. Rather than waiting until that time, let's run our flow now. While our flow is running, let's take a look at the other tabs of our flow workspace. The Connections tab is where we can see and edit the connections for each of our input and output steps. The Scheduled Tasks tab is where we can add new tasks and modify existing tasks. Here we see the task we just scheduled to run daily at 11 a.m. The Run History tab shows us the status for the flow we just ran. Both our output steps succeeded. The Run History will grow as our flow runs each day at 11 a.m. We can also see the revision history of our flow. If a flow fails, an error message will appear next to the failure status, and we will receive an email notifying us of the flow failure. When we explore all data sources, we see the two outputs of our flow. When our flow runs as scheduled, daily at 11 a.m., these two data sources will be updated with fresh data. Workbooks based on these data sources will display the fresh data as well. When we explore all flows, we see the flow we just published and scheduled. As the owner of the flow, we can assign permissions to other users who may want to run or edit our flow. Currently, all users can view and save our flow. We can set custom permissions or choose from the predefined options. Tableau Server Administrators can monitor the real-time status of the processes running in Tableau Server. Both Tableau Server Administrators and Tableau Site Administrators can monitor flow activity and performance using administrative views. Tableau Server Administrators can create schedules that others may use to schedule their flows. For additional help on the use of Tableau Prep Conductor, please visit onlinehelp.tableau.com. Thank you for watching this video on Tableau Prep Conductor. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau.